Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing very well. This is a long overdue video on how I use branches for my climbing indoor plants. Now, this video has been filmed in a process over a couple of months with a move in between. So part of these clips are kind of jumbled and I wanted to kind of bring it all together by explaining each thing. So. In December, we had a couple of storms in which I collected some branches and basically filmed the process of how I collect branches outside and the process I go through to get them kind of ready for being used indoors on houseplants. In the middle of all that, we moved. <laughs> and so everything's a little bit different and jumbled on how I use things. I actually brought loads of these branches with me to the new house and we'll be using them on my plants. Wanted to tie it all together on how I use branches for my indoor plants. Today, I thought I would go through the process of how I like prepare branches for growing my plants up branches inside so basically like where do I collect them what do I do to them to treat them before I put plants on them I have gotten some questions about what I do to treat the branches etc and how do I prepare them for bringing them inside and growing my plants on them indoors so we just had a pretty bad storm last week and generally the time that I collect my branches is just after a storm because there's quite a lot of trees around me and um, there's always branches just thrown and flown everywhere. So that is what we're going to do today. I have selected quite a few already just in the last couple of days when I'm walking around and I've lined them up behind me. I'll show the, you them in a second. And yeah, we'll look for a couple of more and I'll talk you through like what I kind of do, what kind of branches am I looking for as well. I do just want to say that if you're using anything from the outdoors, the wild, from nature, to grow your plants on indoors, try to do so um, just like consciously, sustainably. For instance, when I'm going around collecting branches, I'm not collecting all of them, I'm leaving quite I'm leaving most of them behind and only selecting the best ones. Even rotting dead branches are very important for wildlife, for fungi, for insects and stuff like that. And for decomposition that is also needed in our ecosystem. So just be conscious of that a little bit when you're collecting stuff, especially branches, driftwood, etc. So when I'm going around, this is at a very small scale. I mean, probably at a time I'll take eight, nine branches and um, generally that lasts me a long time, particularly if I take a slightly longer one that will last me a longer time. I also reuse the ones that are indoors as well. Don't take anything from national parks, uh, special conservation areas and stuff like that. Look up that information um, for whatever country that you're living in to be sure that you're not collecting anything super important. I just wanted to put that out there and say that I do think that that is a very important thing, particularly when you're taking stuff for personal use from the wild. That being said, let's uh, go through the process of what I do. So it's a very wet and rainy time here. It's also December now, so we're in winter. A lot of plants have already died back where I live. As you can see, there's nothing on this tree here. <laughs> um, leaf wise um, so I basically just walk around you can see a couple of sticks here on the ground and I'll bring you through like what I would choose and what I wouldn't so for instance this one looks pretty cool pretty interesting before I probably would have chosen a branch like this before um, but I kind of know that it's not the best shape it does have a bit of a bend to it it's also a little bit flimsy on one end just for the length you want to be picking something that's fairly sturdy. Um, straighter is better. It's just easier to balance. I have a couple of very not straight branches in my collection. Um, my philodendron species Sagifolium is growing up, a super bent one, and so is my varicosum. And they're just super awkward indoors. Unless you have something really sturdy to lean it up against and you're not moving the plant, 
um, that's fine. But when you're moving them to water them or clean or whatever, it gets super frustrating. So I'm trying to choose much more straight um, branches, although I think it looks really cool to have kind of quirky looking ones. Um, it just doesn't really work indoors in my current space at least. So none of these I would really pick. That one feels a little bit too light and um, might be a little bit rotting inside. So that might have been there for a while. Um, I'll be picking things that haven't really started to rot yet. All right, so I'm just going to take you to the pile that I already have. Um, this is more than enough for me um, at this point in time. And most of these I probably won't actually take in, but I'll just show you what I'm looking at. So um, it's actually quite interesting. Look at this. This one, this straight one over here, I put that there a few days ago and the ivy that was growing on it that has been ripped out has already turned itself towards the sun and has started growing up the tree that it's leaning against, which I just think is crazy. Nature is crazy. Look at those, um, look at those roots. All right, so let's walk you through this. So I'll stand back and you can see the different heights um, that I've chosen here. So, okay, this one looks great to me. I will probably saw this off I do saw off some awkward pieces if I need to or break them off um, sawing is better so you don't have sharp stuff that you're knocking past indoors um, look at this beautiful lichen so this is a lovely straight log <laughs> lovely straight branch very cool it has some nice moss on it this ivy will have to go because I don't really have an interest in growing that indoors. So I'm gonna rip that off and I'm just gonna put it where it was on that tree and it can start growing up. So yeah, that's a lovely straight one. Um, the one beside it, I was really, really happy with because it's very hard to find a branch in my area at least that's long but also straight most of them have little bends in them and stuff like that so i'm really really happy with this one i think it's really good it feels quite sturdy the outer layer is starting to rot a little bit it's been a very wet week guys i should have taken these in earlier but so these smaller branches are fantastic most plants will suit this kind of setup um apart from the larger plants obviously um, slower growing plants like anthurium or hoyas and stuff like that work great on things like this. Um, not to mention the fact that I am obsessed with lichen. But yeah, I have been taking these indoors quite a bit, leaving the lichen on and I really love the look of it and some of them have survived. I don't really think I've heard of people growing lichen indoors. Um, I guess they're kind of like air plants, but yeah, they're really, really interesting to me. So I love picking ones that have really interesting lichen on them and seeing how how they do. Just leaving them on the branches, I'm not too fussed with that. This one's fairly straight, doesn't have much going on. This one is fantastic, probably my favorite one here. Let me just show you. Really, really cool, this one. Then I have a few that have a few kind of offshoots types. Um, like this, like that one here. It has this and this and a couple of other small branches up here. That's just kind of interesting to look at while the main stem is, while the main branch is like straight. So that could be cool, but I will have to saw some of them off. You get the point, um, fairly self-explanatory. I just go around picking up sticks <laughs> and I laid them all here. Um, so the next thing that I do is I basically get the hose and I blast them. I blast them off. I try not to take too much of the lichen off, but some of it will come off. This just kind of gets rid of a lot of the insects and stuff that will be living on the wood and in the lichen. Um, it also just takes off any surface level stuff. Okay, um, it's raining quite a lot, so sorry if there's water on the screen, but basically I just take my hose and put it on the strongest setting. And you know, just like you do in the shower for treating pests and stuff, I just blast them off. Some of the lichen will come off, some of the moss will come off, that's okay. You do kind of want dead stuff to come off, 
you don't want to be really promoting a lot of decay here. I don't know what it's like where you live, but in Ireland, a lot of the water will contribute to like decaying of wood, especially and moisture. So I know we're wetting them right now, so that seems counteractive, but we're just blasting off the bad stuff. Well, none of it is bad, just the stuff that we don't want indoors. It might be obvious by now that I'm not really concerned about bringing stuff from outside indoors. If you are, this may not be for you and that's totally fine. Um, I'm just showing you guys what I do in case you're interested. I'm not too fussed if I get some insects inside that shouldn't be there. Um, that doesn't bother me that much. I'll flip these around now and do the other sides. The next thing that I'll do then is bring these indoors and put them beside the fire to dry them out um, and that can take anywhere from one week to two weeks whatever it takes for them to be bone dry and um, so I'll take all of these inside. It's about three weeks after me filming that first part of the video and we've had Christmas, holidays, New Year, we've had everything. They're well and truly dry. I've been just waiting to film an update so these are like this is longer than I'd ever normally leave them. Um, so they're really, really dry. Excuse my dirty fireplace. Um, but these are bone, bone dry. Um, so they're ready to use really. Um, that's, that's kind of all that I do. I don't really do much. If you're worried about pests and things and you're still not sure, you can leave them even longer. You could hose them down again, let them dry out again, whichever you feel comfortable with. I, as I said, I'm not that fussed, so that's enough for me. Obviously, the longer that you leave these here, if you are trying to keep lichen on them and things like that, they will continue to dry out even further, like these are quite crispy. So if you want to preserve them, you can uh, wet them um, or just not leave them to dry out beside the fire for too long. Um, but yeah, that's it. All right, so let's start over here. We have my philodendron pedatum, my big girl, my OG. Um, so I have a beautiful straight branch here. And as you can see, it is so well rooted on. Um, let me pull this out and show you what the aerial roots are like. So. You can see them, let me turn this a bit better here. See the way the aerial roots have all grabbed on here with some lovely root hairs. Yeah, so you can kind of see them there. This plant attached really well. I think it was a really good branch because it has a lot of texture and it's super straight. I did keep a kind of a bamboo string pole that I used to use. Um, just to stabilize it in the pot but but this has worked really well and looks gorgeous in my opinion we also have my philodendron tortum beside on this if you can see it this plant hasn't been so great at it hasn't like attached yet sometimes plants will take a little bit longer in my opinion to kind of get used to the pole and also if there are drops in humidity the aerial roots some plants just don't take as well so you can see it hasn't really started to put out any aerial roots that will attach let me show you down here also can you see they are just not attaching um, this may happen later on as it grows up and up and um, I may propagate it. Higher humidity just helps with this also. Um, what else? We have one of my pride and joys, my Monstera stantoliana uh, variegata. Now this plant actually attached super well at the beginning but then the branch was too small so I had to kind of pull it away from the branch that it was on and then re-stick it um, which doesn't always work which is kind of annoying that is something annoying about this process and why I then started to kind of start off with bigger branches um, 
So you can see these older aerial roots had attached to the previous branch. They kind of go back here and I had to pull them off, which is annoying. Then it, you can see the older aerial roots along here. But then I moved it to the new branch. And as you can see, it is starting to now attach to this one. Look at that big juicy root popping out here, which is a fresh one. And that's stuck on pretty well. But the only problem is I'm already at the end of the branch again. <laughs> Plants just go, are growing too fast on this, honestly. Um, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that, if I'm gonna propagate it or extend it somehow. Um, but yeah, then behind here, we have my Monstera siltipicana that recently got a new branch and this has attempted to stick on. There's a root here, if you can see that. So that is sticking on really well. It's just one of the ones that take well to this really. And it's starting to stick on on another little shoot there. Then we have my varicosum on this <laughs> very awkwardly shaped branch but I loved it and um, this worked well in the old house because I could have it propped up now I have managed to kind of prop it up off the wall here um, but yeah this plant again varicosum hasn't been attaching as well it has attached in some parts but the roots kind of they just attached on a little bit and then kind of gave up I'm not sure what that was about maybe it's humidity maybe it was care um, I did share on my Instagram that my varicosum lost a couple of its lower leaves, so it's quite bare all the way down here um, during the move. So I may propagate this. Let me know in the comments if I should or not. Oh, it's painful, but maybe it will look better in the end. And as the arrow roots don't attach on as well, you can notice that the leaves don't tend to get much bigger. Like, they're kind of staying the same, honestly. Um, so they only really get bigger if they feel that support with the area roots attaching on. So that's that. But I may start again with this and may also just get a straighter branch, not be as awkward. It's quite awkward to water with. I kind of just have to lift it and balance it while it's watering. My um, Rufidifor decursiva, which has super, super attached. You can see that it's like super flat against the branch. Um, but that has been a little bit dormant in terms of growth and it's now picking up again. So they're kind of the main ones. Oh, how could I forget? Sagifolium. This one has big fat juicy roots. <laughs> the only problem with this is because this is such a large plant in my, what I think is going on with this, while it does attach, it, it definitely wants more kind of horizontal space instead of wrapping around a kind of a skinnier branch like that, if you know what I mean. You see the way it's kind of reaching out. It wants something long and flat. Um, because of its size, because it's so thick and heavy, I think. That's what it's looking for. It's looking for a wide tree trunk, which is not what I'm giving it. So I am thinking what I want to do with this. Um, maybe it's not as suitable for a branch, but maybe, I'm not sure. I'm having a couple of ideas um, for this wall that may involve something horizontal. So I may move it over there. But yeah. So that's kind of how I do it. So I hope this has explained how I use branches for my indoor climbing plants. This video has been requested quite a bit and people constantly ask me questions on how I prepare the branches and things like that. So I hope that clears things up. If there is some burning questions that you still have that I didn't answer, please ask them below and I'll get back to you. I hope this video helped you. I hope it was informative or at least just show you how I do it. And yeah, that's it really. So I will see you again in the next video. Hope that you enjoyed and have a great day. Bye.